and welcome to another episode of Masonic Curators. And we're going to be speaking today again about the Knight Templar of April. Uh, now you've seen me in a couple of different spots here in the Newtonville Masonic Building. This building is huge. And we just wanted to show you the organ loft and the beautiful clock that is behind me. Um, if you ever get a chance to come to Newton, Massachusetts, make sure you stop in to the Newtonville Masonic Temple. It's a great old building. Uh, 1896, Joe? Yes. 1896 it was built. So today's episode is about Masonic aprons. Again, now, I did one earlier um, about the triangular skull and bone apron. But today I'm going to talk about the other apron. Now, not many commanderies had this apron, so it is kind of hard to find. Now, for you, for you who have not viewed the uh, Templar uh, triangular apron yet, I would suggest that you watch this video because in that video I talk about the backing and how most of them are black, but some had the green field with the red cross. Now, as I just said, some commanderies had two aprons. They would have the Knight Templar apron, if they wore one. And then, once they did the, or conferred the order, or the illustrious order of Red Cross, very few, but some had this apron. This is the apron used for the illustrious order of Red Cross. Now, the ones that I have seen, which is only less than a handful, do not have a flap. So it's flapless. It does have the bold bottom. It is a green velvet. It does have the green tassel. And I've seen either green cloth or this one here, green silk. And you can see the silk is deteriorating. And the only thing that's on the apron is the Red Cross. Also, in some commandries, first of all, the Knight Templar would wear his baldric, or also a sash. That was common in all the commandries for the Sir Knight in uniform to wear. But, in some commandries, not all, he would be given a second baldric, the illustrious order of Red Cross baldric or sash. And he would wear this only during that order. Now, in some commanderies, like mine, Cambridge Commander number 42, our black baldrics, if you turn them inside out, had the green. So the Sir Knight could just turn it around inside out and wear it during the illustrious order. But in very few commanderies, they would actually have two baldrics or sashes. Uh, this one here does have the person's name on it. And unfortunately, it does not have a manufacturer. And I know some of the comments that you guys had put out there that you would like to know who some of the manufacturers are. Uh, not all the time did the manufacturer or distributor put their names on these pieces. Unfortunately, other times they have fallen off. Um, but, um, if you do some research, as John and I had mentioned in the previous comments that we did in some of our Massachusetts about research, um, you're going to find a number of regalia companies that carried roughly the same pieces as did the other one. But I would highly suggest that you start your own research. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of catalogs and other paraphernalia that is online now that you can look up both uh, images of and text talks about it. There's a great book, uh, Fraternal Regalia, that came out a few years ago, talks about uh, the Knight Templar uh, Regalia. Um, and just some of the sites that are out there that speak about uh, different regalia and manufacturers that is online now. So uh, I can't stress enough that research is needed. And as I did with one of the videos from Cambridge, I will end with this one um, that uh, talks about the beehive 
that he that so demeaned himself as not to be endeavoring to add to the common stock of knowledge or understanding, be deemed a drone in the hive of nature, a useless member of society. Meaning, don't be a drone, don't be a useless member. You guys who are collectors, men or women, that they do collect our stuff, get out there and promote the fraternity. Get out there and promote this regalia. Uh, it is a fragile fabric of our history. Much of it is getting lost, damaged, forgotten about. Get out to the lodges, speak about it, get online, talk about it, post your pictures, post your collections. Just get out there and do whatever you can to promote artifacts. Thank you very much.